get into a school, a grad school. Know a little bit about the person who you're going to talk to. One of the beautiful things about LinkedIn is you can probably find out so many things about people that they don't really want to know on a professional side, because especially if they're on LinkedIn, and everybody here should be on LinkedIn. Um, but knowing a little bit about what they've done, and I don't mean stalking them to say, you know, oh, I saw you had a tuna sandwich for lunch yesterday because I follow you on Facebook. Um, but I think knowing a little bit more about the places they've lived, the schools they went to, um, some of the things that they are posting, when you go into a meeting, puts you ahead of everybody else because odds are, especially if you're going for a job interview or a school interview now, whoever the interviewer is has probably going to see 15 to 20 people, so you have to figure out what it is. And by turning the conversation around and making it conversant about a narrative about them gives you something else to talk about and makes you think about, oh, that's kind of different. And I'll give you an example uh, of a guy that I met last year um, as we kind of talk about how you set yourself apart. So it was at the Sloan IT conference, which is in February for, you know, probably about three or 4,000 people looking to get jobs in analytics. Um, and some of my students came up to me and said, you got to meet this guy. I'm like, okay, he's got a really interesting story. So I go over and I shake this guy's hand. We're sitting outside the interview room and I said, so who are you? He goes, I'm a sports haiku guy. I'm like, well, what do you mean by that? He goes, I write a haiku about sports every day. I tweet about it. I put it on Facebook. I put it on LinkedIn. I have a radio show in Vermont and I talk about all these little things that I do. It was great. So every, for the next 25 minutes, I went around and introduced this guy to everybody I could as a sports haiku guy. The first thing that everybody said is, boy, that's different. That set him apart from everybody else. Now, the, the funny story is, I started to follow him on Twitter and he kind of disappeared after four months, so I don't know what happened to the sports haiku guy. But he figured out a way to create something that set him apart, that created a narrative around him that was different from the other 4,000 people that were there. I'm really willing to give him a chance. Unfortunately, he disappeared. But someday I'll find the sports haiku guy again. But think about how what it is that you can do as we talk a little bit about the narrative and what sets you apart um, for things like that. Next slide. How should I create a voice? Now, my good friend Chris LaPlaca is one of four original employees of ESPN, still there. Um, and I spent some time with the communi communication staff at ESPN, usually every other year, and we go up and we just talk about things. Uh, one of the biggest things that ESPN does now, probably better than any other communications team especially in sports and entertainment, is they use the idea of 360 degree communication. So basically what they are doing is if you work in communications at ESPN, one of the 30 or 40 people that work there, you have to figure out how to use every tool possible to tell the story about the story that people are writing about. So um, they've created their own platform where they post a lot of things that go on just about the business of ESPN. And what they found is by making sure that the people who are telling the story know how to tell a story has really increased the interest level in everything that ESPN does. Uh, they've also found other uh, media opportunities to tell stories about their announcers, their front office staff uh, that they didn't think existed before, all because they're using every tool possible to tell their story 360 degrees. Next slide. Conversant tools, spoken word we talked a little bit about, telephone skills, man oh man, being able to talk on the phone. Um, I have um, another friend of mine, his name is Lou Demilio, he was the head of uh, PR for Fox, he's now working on his own doing some stuff with the XFL and the WWE. Uh, and last year, um, I just called him on the phone just to see how he was doing. I found out on Facebook that it was his birthday, of course, because everybody can do that. And there was like stunned silence on the phone for about 15 seconds, and I didn't know why. And he goes, nobody ever calls me anymore. And, uh, you know, and it's funny, now in the world especially, we're, we're so dependent on typing away and looking down as opposed to looking up. You know, the ability to call somebody and have a conversation about something that's either substantial or just to kind of bullshit them and figure out, you know, kind of what it is that's going on in their lives, really, really valuable. So phone skills and being able to talk to people in the spoken word is really important. Video. Again, everybody in this room is a member of the media. As long as you have a phone, and I'm assuming everybody in this room has a phone, you are a member of the media. You are able to record, um, share information more than any other generation before you. 
uh, and it will be interesting to see where it goes. But being able to understand how you can use that to positively tell your story is really, really important. You know, mobile skills. What you'll find, anyone who wants to work for a professional team in North America will go into a meeting, especially people who are really conversant in texting, and you will find that most of the people who you are interviewing with for internships or jobs do not know how to use a small phone. Um, they don't understand the skills. But you, because you have now been a generation that has brought up texting uh, and sharing things on a digital device, gives you uh, an edge to try and figure out how you can help old people like me and other people uh, who are making in decision-making processes um, understand better how they can converse with, with everybody else, a larger audience around them. Um, coding. Anybody here take coding classes? Usually, hugely important. So um, there have been a couple of panel discussions on analytics uh, and how analytics will continue to expand and affect everything that we do in every part of our, our life. Living here in the world of Amazon, I'm sure a lot of people understand that. Um, but having a casual understanding of how coding works gives you an advantage. And especially, you know, there was a lot of talk about esports this morning and the myth and reality of where esports and gaming are. But um, you will see more and more, especially if you want to get involved in sports or entertainment, the ability to have an understanding of how coding works, again, gives you an edge over other people. Um, uh, writing skills, we talked a little bit about. Doing the little things, letter writing, man oh man. So um, I work with um, another gentleman who was the president of the US Olympic Committee, founded Yes Network, founded Turner Sports. His name is Dr. Harvey Schiller. Um, and one thing that Harvey does at 74 years old, he sends out handwritten birthday notes to everybody who is on his Rolodex when their birthday comes along. Um, and the ability to send out handwritten notes as thank yous versus sending emails or texts to people sets you apart from everybody else. And it becomes pretty impressive, especially if you get into the fundraising business. Uh, and everybody here, I'm sure, is constantly hit up for dollars for schools you went to or causes that you may have given to. Uh, the ability to send a handwritten note and actually mail something, put something in a mailbox and mail it to somebody with a stamp on it. Um, Again, sets you apart. People will keep those things around. And when you come back to talk to them again, um, that will also show a little bit more of your personality that's really, really important. Social skills, social media. You know, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn. Um, all really important tools. But again, you don't have to actively use them all the time. Know how they can help benefit you and tell your narrative. Next slide. Most importantly, you have to be able to sing and dance. So in the world we live in today, uh, having a, a little bit of knowledge about a lot of things and building that into your narrative when you're having a conversation, really, really, really important. Conversing tools, you know, just some ideas, things to think about. You can't be great at everything, but one of the things we do when we start our class is the ability to get stuff done. When you work for big corporations and you go from meeting to meeting, sit back and think about what it is that I can do to help this business move from here to here and what are the skills that I need. Getting stuff done. Anybody here in the military? Been in the military? GSD is one of the most important things that you will ever find because especially in the military, to move something from one place to the next is the most important thing that you do. Everything that you do in sports and entertainment, in this business, really helps you to understand how to get stuff done. And if you go into an organization, whether you're an intern, a volunteer, an assistant, uh, a marketing manager, the ability to help that organization just move things along, incredibly important, while people are sitting there wondering about their stats or if a team won or lost. Um, you know, another thing, if you work for a team, and I've worked for a lot of bad teams, I worked in the NBA for nine years and never saw a playoff win. So um, you work for teams, and people kind of sit there and get this mentality of us. You know, we did this. Now, there are some people that, that are involved in um, what uh, 
one of my uh, former bosses used to call the circles of sports if you work for a team. So the inner circle are the players, the, outer, the circle outside of that are the coaches, outside of that are the general manager, the player personnel people, then outside of that are kind of the people who deal with players in other ways, PR, some marketing, community relations. Uh, and then you've got this big outer circle of everybody else who works for a team. Sales, administration, uh, digital social media, um, all these other people, everybody down to groundskeepers. And they are in this outer circle. Now, you want to be part of that organization, which is really, really important. But you have to figure out, no matter what happens on that field, how do you make more chicken salad for that organization? How do you help them move things along that has nothing to do with wins and losses? And that's not easy to do a lot of times because you get caught up in the moment and the excitement and the passion of sports, especially. Uh, but figuring out how you can keep things moving along and get stuff done for the organization that you work for, really, really important. You know, being innovative and curious and diverse. You know, this is a perfect example of a business. Anybody here use Vine before we went out of business? So the biggest problem with Vine was that they were never able to figure out how to effectively tell their story. So as a result, couldn't make any money, cash poor. Even though the adoption rate was pretty good, there was no way to continue to fund it in Vine went out of business. And a lot, a lot of people lost Vine videos. Um, but uh, their biggest problem was they could never explain to the marketplace what exactly they were trying to do for the long term. Next slide. Okay. So what are you known for? What are your passions? What skills do you have that are good but could be great? You know, what do you do? How do you, how do you learn? What are others doing, more importantly, or not doing that you can either take advantage of or improve upon? And craft those pieces into your narrative. And we're going to touch now on a couple of people who've built a really cool narrative. And there's a little bit of a surprise at the end for them, too. OK, next slide. This is one of my favorite guys. Uh, his name is J.R. Jackson. He runs uh, a site on YouTube called J.R. Sports Brief. Works for a lot of different people. It's the largest uh, independent uh, interview site for sports on YouTube. Next slide. OK. So these are four people that I mentor. JR mentioned young man named Buster Scher, who runs a platform called NBA Focus. Tommy Rothman, who's built a business called Mixed Memes, and Jack Jameson, uh, another young man who built a site um, called New York Sports Hub. Next slide. So collectively, they have an excess of 28 million followers. They have a diverse audience. They know how to engage on every platform possible. They're constantly generating content and engaging in conversations that they see that are going on that are relevant to them. You know, they've ramped up staff. A lot of them have added followers. Um, they've, they get credentialed for events, really important if you want to create content. And probably more importantly, they're all cash positive. So they're all making money in a very short period of time. Next slide. Their average age is 23. Uh, two of them haven't even graduated high school yet. One of, them, one of the two, Buster, isn't going to college, which is a mistake, but that's another story. But more importantly, they know how to engage and tell stories and be relevant to the people that are around them. So creative storytelling. The best thing about the world we live in right now, everybody here can be a storyteller if you figure out what your story is. The platforms exist like never before. Uh, I heard a stat a couple weeks ago that seven years ago, there were, uh, I have to get this right, 10 media platforms regular media platforms, traditional media platforms, for every person who was in communications. Today, there are 10 communications people for every media platform. So the ability to go and create your own story and generate your own interest has never been greater. And you just have to figure out how to do it. Um, you know, we're in a global conversation today. Everything that we do, I think it's funny when I talk to people uh, who look at what used to be known as traditional media. And they sit there and say, well, you know, the story was in the New York Times, or there was a, something on a local TV station. Um, but that's not really relevant. It actually is, because at once you hit send and something is posted, anyone in the world has the ability to view it, has the ability to engage in that conversation, has the ability to help you drive your narrative going forward. The question becomes, how do you engage with people to make sure that they know what it is that you're doing? You know, that's one of the challenges, but it's also one of the opportunities. And the multiple platforms we talked about in storytelling, 
you know, tremendously easy to engage, easier to understand than ever before, and most importantly, very easy to get your narrative and your story involved and in front of the people that you want it to be in front of. Next. What to do? How do you get there? Think wide, read wide, and follow wide. Um, people constantly talk about the ability um, to not be able to get in front of the right people. But if you use social platforms now, if you call people, if you send notes, uh, and if you are looking constantly to figure out how you can grow your narrative, using these ideas will really help. Um, reach out and network, we talked about that. Ask for help, but know what it is when you're going to ask somebody for help that you want answered. Uh, I probably get um, 15 to 20 requests, whether it's on LinkedIn or someone's father or mother, every week. One of the first questions I ask is, what is it that you want from me to help you with? Unfortunately, I would say seven out of 10 times people don't know, and the answers that I get back are, I want to get involved working in sports or entertainment. Well, okay. Uh, the advice that I give a lot of people, the best way to do that, marry rich. So you can do a lot of stuff with money, um, and it actually helps open a lot of doors. But I think thinking what it is that you want to get out of an interview, or a conversation, or a Twitter exchange, or reaching out to someone on LinkedIn, know what it is going in that you want to do to help tell their story or help create your own narrative. Um, reach out and network, we talked about that. Engage intelligently. So when you go in, and it's funny, um, with Paul Allen passing away yesterday, one of the, the first assumptions that I made, should never make this assumption when you're teaching, uh, we started a, our class this year, graduate class, <clears throat> and I mentioned Paul Allen. And I got all these blank stares in the room. And I said, is there something that I'm missing? Do you people not know who Paul Allen is? And I assumed that, that they did, which you should never do. And no one in the room uh, knew at that time, who, not only that he owned two teams, and these are graduate students wanting to work in sports, not a good idea, uh, but also he was the co-founder of Microsoft. So um, yesterday, I was actually um, walking around when I got the text that Paul and I passed away and five of my students sent me information, uh, sent me a note saying, oh, now I know who that guy was. So, um, so it was kind of interesting to know. And the, the other thing about being in the moment, and uh, has anybody seen the, um, the HBO show The Shop with LeBron? Yeah, has anybody seen it? It's kind of okay. Um, uh, but the first show he had on, um, he had Snoop Dogg on, and Snoop Dogg talked about the ability to be relevant. And he uses all these things to figure out how he can be relevant to a new, a new world that may not know him and take for granted that just because he's been successful in the past, that his narrative has not changed. And he doesn't, he doesn't know how to engage with people now. So being relevant to the people that you're talking to or the people that you want to meet, really, really, really important. The last example I'll give you, uh, I'm working now uh, one of the projects I'm working on is Creed II, which will be out the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, um, and stars Michael B. Jordan. And when Michael Jordan, the other Michael Jordan, had his 55th, 55th birthday party last year, he went to do a school visit in Chicago and couldn't believe the deflated looks on half the students when he walked in the room because they thought he was the other Michael Jordan. And he didn't realize that even in the city of Chicago, that kids who are... 17 or younger, never saw Michael Jordan play. So they know of him, but the relevance was in Black Panther. No, he used to play basketball for the Wizards and the Bulls. So kind of always being aware of the person that you're talking to or the community around you and not taking things for granted and listening when you're building your own narrative, really, really important. So, and create your platform and engage with influencers. You know, LinkedIn, as I said, really valuable. Twitter and Facebook as a listening tool, even if you don't want to be involved all the time and constantly post things, not as important as being able to know how to use the platforms. Next one. Who to engage with? I always like to put Mark Cuban up there for various reasons, but um, you know, a perfect example, he and Ted Leonsis, uh, the owner of Monumental Sports, really still the only two owners who are constantly engaged in a narrative with their fans. We'll answer emails, we'll answer some tweets, um, but really understand the value of listening and listening to their audience and figuring out how they can grow their businesses. Influences, executives, and decision makers. Next slide. Okay. 
some things to remember. Um, one of my favorite um, stories, I worked on uh, a Broadway play on Vince Lombardi. This is my buddy Dan Loria, uh, who played uh, Lombardi on stage. Uh, and one of the, the, the positive things that, that Vince Lombardi tried to emulate everywhere he went was not that he was a great coach or a disciplined uh, leader. Anybody know what he was most proud of? You want to guess? He was a math teacher. He loved the ability to teach and learn from everyone around him. Uh, when we did the play, that was the one thing that came through. Everybody we talked to uh, who had either played under Coach Lombardi or worked with Coach Lombardi said his ability to teach and his ability to learn and learn from the people around him and tell those stories was really valuable. Next slide. Done is better than perfect. Get stuff done. Most important thing, you can always fix mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. But getting stuff done and not dwelling, especially in a, a world we live in today where things have to get done really fast, very, very important. Everybody fails. Pick yourself up and learn. One of the great things I, I really enjoy about teaching um, is that I'm constantly learning from everybody around me. Really valuable. Um, sometimes the path chooses you. I never, 10 years ago, Ever, ever, to this day, I never wanted to work for myself. Um, but through the people that I met in the past, the relationships that I built, hopefully the listening to all the people around me, have helped me grow a business that I didn't think I was going to be able to grow. Now, 10 years in, I still have the same angst on Sunday night, even though things are pretty well established. Uh, but you'll find, especially if you're going to go out on your own in the consulting or the entrepreneurial business and work with multiple people, that um, that angst and that kind of drive is always there because you never kind of know where you're going to go. Um, but especially being around sports entertainment, there's a lot of things that you have no control over. Um, ownership changes. You know, I, I was fired twice. Um, well, actually fired once, and the other time we just kind of decided to part ways. But when I was with the 76ers, we had just gotten in a, we just had a baby. I was there three seasons. Harold Katz was the owner of the team, sold the team. Uh, the new owner, uh, led by a guy named Pat Croce, came in and they decided they just were going to whack everybody in the front office and start all over again. So it wasn't the fault of the players who won 19 games the last year I was there, 18 games the last year I was there. It was the fault of the culture of the front office. Um, so Pat decided to let people go. Um, and it had nothing to do with the people who really were working there, who were trying as hard as they could. Um, but it was just something that was kind of thrown, th you know, thrown into the mix that we were in. So, um, you know, the path chooses you a lot of times. The last one, especially for anybody under 30, get comfortable being uncomfortable. We're in a vol volatile business society right now, especially in sports and entertainment. You're going to be put into situations that you probably aren't going to choose and may not like, but get used to them because it's never going to really change unless, like I said, you marry rich and you go and can start your own team. Uh, but you learn more from being uncomfortable. And people say, you know, you learn more from losing than you do from winning. I don't really think that's true. I think it's great winning and losing kind of sucks. But, um, but the lessons that you learn from both sides are really, really important. You know, some of the other things to remember about sp storytelling. Dallas Kramer's government has another book right now uh, just came out about leadership. It's stories that keep people alive. We love listening and telling stories. The ability to tell your own story to audiences big and small makes you interesting to them. They don't want to sit there and say, oh, there's somebody with no imagination. It doesn't really work, and it will not help you get ahead. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to spend every minute saying, oh, what story am I going to try and tell today? But you'll see, especially as you get a little bit older, when you think about the stories and the people and the places, and this is a people and places business, that help you get ahead you put together a pretty interesting narrative, especially when you're around people that you feel a little bit more comfortable around. You know, Howard Hughes, never check an interesting fact. Again, not necessarily always true, but the ability to tell stories and figure out what makes people interesting around you really, really important. And then um, my buddy Scott Layden, who's now the, the general manager of the Town Wolves when we were together in New York, really emphasized the fact that sports, more than anything else, is a relationship business. And like I said, I just mentioned some of the people that I forgot that I knew in Seattle who were here. But the, the reputation and the human capital that you create for yourself is the most valuable thing that you have in this business. Uh, I know a lot of people who had really big jobs um, at brands, teams, leagues, 
and they let that define who they were, and it, although not being a big part of their narrative, was really important to them, and they kind of used that hammer a lot more than they probably should have. And you'd be very surprised when someone leaves a company or gets let go or a company gets sold, and then they go back out in the marketplace and people think that they're jerks. It really comes back to haunt them, especially in sports. And that reputation and, and the human capital that you take with you is the only thing that you can take with you as you go from place to place. Next slide. Most important thing. So I've worked in this business for 33 years in some form of this business. And it's never really been work. I mean, I have friends who work on Wall Street, uh, do a lot of things that they hate their jobs. I've never really, I mean, I've had some interesting situations, but I've never really hated my job. Uh, but this is a fun business. So if you come in here frowning, looking down at the ground, trying to figure out, oh, what am I going to do, um, don't come in here. You know, this is a fun business. Uh, there's tremendous opportunity, as you've heard from people yesterday and today. Uh, you have to figure out how your narrative fits into that and figure out what you can do to kind of move things forward. But this is fun. Um, and you can figure out how to have a pretty interesting career in any field that you want to be in as long as you listen. You figure out how to tell your story and you figure out how to help people get stuff done. Done. Questions? Anybody have a question? I'm not going to sing. <laughs> cool. So um, just a couple of other quick things. Um, you know, I think the ability to network and figure out you know, how you can get along. Um, but use the people that are here and figure out what you can do to help grow what it is that you want to do by listening to the people around you. Um, I found that, especially on the sports and entertainment side, that people will help you if you give them a chance and you figure out what it is that you want to ask and, and kind of grow the narrative with them and figure out how you can help them. But you know, we are a business of understanding what losing is like, um, understanding what long hours are, understanding sometimes what not a lot of money is about. But when you're around a culture of a positive organization, no matter what business you're in, incredibly valuable and figure out how you can contribute to that and then figure out how you can figure out what your story is, fits into the story that the overall organization is going to tell you. Cool. While well, I'm around, a um, couple of other things. I do a newsletter on Sundays. Some people may get it. If you want to sign up, you can sign up on my website. We have almost 40,000 members. It doesn't cost anything. Um, if you have any questions about what it is that you want to do or how I can help you, just ask. Uh, I'll be around for a while. I've got a couple calls. I'm going back tomorrow, but I'm, you know, that's my stuff. You know, I have a wife and two kids. This is my second wife, so I don't sleep a lot. Um, but I enjoy helping people. I enjoy helping learning from other people and figure out how we can make this all a successful business. So thanks very much.